Hello, this is Adam Began, and I'm the host of Historically Haunted Show, where I talk about some very rare historical and haunted locations that I visited. I also interview some of the very best in the paranormal and cryptozoology field. So tune in every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Paranormal King Radio Network. And prepare to be educated about the unknown. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a, back to another great episode of Historically Haunted Show here on Paranormal King Radio Network. Uh, we're live tonight with a very special guest of mine, someone I've talked to, <clears throat> never met personally, but I've been talking to uh, on Facebook through different chats. We know a lot of people through the Hinsdale House, um, and, and she's um, she's an Alaska girl, but she's 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 uh, living up in New York now. And I'm going to bring her right on right now. Stephanie Smith, how are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me on. Oh, excellent. No, absolutely. Thank you for coming on. Um, I, before yeah. we talk about what you founded, Fifth Element Paranormal, we'll talk about that in a minute, but I want to talk about the Shanley House, mm-hmm. or uh, the, I'm sorry, the Haunted Shanley Hotel uh, in upstate New York. Where exactly in New York is that? It's in Napa, Nope. It's a really, really little town. Um, most people that know areas of New York, if I tell them that it's by Ellenville, then they're like, oh, okay, yeah, I know where that's at. Okay. Okay, and you've been uh, you've been there geez, for a good time now since you've pretty much been in New York for the most part, right? Yes, I have. I moved here. COVID happened. I was on an investigation there, and the owner offered me a job, so <laughs> kind of fell in my lap. Oh, that's killer. Because I remember seeing uh, when I first started getting to the paranormal field again, seeing you posting things in different group things about uh, your AKA boyfriend, uh, so to speak, spirit that gets jealous of uh, other guys. <laughs> You're around when you're there um so it's yeah. definitely a, it's definitely a season hotel you've said many times if i'm ever in the area check it out and uh i hear a lot of good things so so what do you uh you got a name for the, for this uh this this boyfriend of yours <laughs> <laughs> his name is joe and he is definitely the head honcho of the hotel he was a mocking hitman so oh yeah he, that's right yeah he's he's big time <laughs> wow Everybody so, listens to Joe. So what's the backstory on him? Have you done any research to find out exactly? I've tried to, actually, and I think that Joe may have been an alias. The closest that I can come up with may be Mo Morris, but without the town historian help and, and with all, all the Irish Mafia stuff kind of being brushed under the rug, it's kind of hard to figure it out for sure. Oh, so Without. it really was mafia. I thought it was just maybe labeling it that, but no shit. There really is ties to. I mean, it is New York after all. I mean, it's upstate, yeah, but well, still. Yeah, but it's it's the Irish mafia, not the Italian mafia. Mm. One of the original owners, James Shanley, was kind of a black sheep of his family, and he we used to say that he liked to dabble in the Irish mafia, but they actually had some descendants come stay one time, and the woman that was there goes, "Oh, honey, we are the Irish mafia." <laughs> So Unreal. <laughs> wow. Because, yeah. yeah, Irish mob was alive and well, too, not just in Cleveland and Boston, but even New York. No shit. So he, the owner himself, whose house it was originally his house or hotel or whatever, he was the head honcho. He was the uh, in the mob. Wow. What year is that house? Yeah. I, I'm, I didn't look into it. What year is that? 1800 something? So he was there in the early 1900s, like 1906 or thereabout. Over 100 years. Yeah. Wow. Wow. What a vibe. And I'm sure it looks all original. It looks not desolate. I know there's a lot going on because I know Hinsdale House with Danny, um, a friend of yours, Danny Klaus. Um, mm-hmm. He's doing a lot of uh, restoration work. Have you guys done anything with that, with this hotel? We are trying our best. Um, the, the previous owner that had it, his name was Salvatore Nicosia, and he passed away in 2016. The current owner, Kelly, actually did work for him. 
Sal put his blood, sweat, and tears. When he bought the hotel, it was abandoned. There had been squatters and people that literally ripped pipings and stuff out of the walls. The second wow. floor was down on the first floor, so it was really bad. So he's done a lot of work to it, you know, before he passed away. Kelly, God bless her, has continued on with his vision. Right now, we're attempting to get the seance room done. Um, we're calling it a seance room because that's what Sal wanted it to be. But it, we want it to be like Victorian style and everything. So we're trying to get the building permits and things like that together. I love that. Uh, is there any way anybody can help donate on online? Is there any website or GoFundMe or yet or anything that way people can help out if they if they want to? Yet? Oh, what is that? Um, there's not anything online to help donate. Um, if anybody wants to, you can always email the hotel directly and and ask Kelly if there's a way to donate if anybody wants to. That'd be great. Awesome. You guys hear that? Yeah. Everybody. In, uh, also, too, real quick, we got UFO Fred uh, Richards in chat. He says, "What's up?" Um, then we got the Shanley Ghost Girl. I imagine that's you. But we got Terry York, yeah. <laughs> uh, George Cannon, Bill Lyons. We got Nicole Gar um, Gaspard, who does um, Real Haunted Connections on Wednesday nights here. Uh, Carlos Nunez, King, Witch and Life Guide. Um, well, actually, Witch and Life Guide, my girlfriend Heather uh, asked a question. She wants to know, was there a bordello in there in the past, possibly? We still have the bordello, actually. <laughs> oh, <laughs> It's still operating with spirits that have clients. We actually use the men as ghost bait whenever they come in, especially men with beards, because one of our ladies really loves men with beards. Oh, so shit. She invites them into her room, and, and you know, she, she might ask for a dollar or two, sometimes a little more, depending on her mood. <laughs> well, I got five bucks and I have to take a gas. I can get there by tomorrow from Maine. It's a three hour drive. If she likes dudes <laughs> with beards. That's me, right? <laughs> Heather won't mind. She loves beards. <laughs> oh, shit. Wow. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. So you guys got your own, you got your own, like I said, you get the bordello room, the seance room. Um, obviously, he must have his main quarters where his bedroom was right i don't know which bedroom his was actually i mean each room is kind of designated there's one that's for the gentleman's quarters and as the name implies it was literally gentlemen only they had a, a pool table they had a yeah, back alley then, the back clubs, yeah. yeah so usually people that you know come in and they're like well what does that mean and i'm like well do you remember that part in titanic where she says that they're going to congratulate each other on being masters of the universe i say that's that room <laughs> they're really not hospitable uh, for women to be in that room in particular yeah and the spirits get angry because that's the way it was and i know it sounds sexist and rude but that's <clears throat> unfortunately that's the way it was there's no kids women or or minorities allowed it was a white gentleman's club they had those a lot back then yes um the cold yes, does correct ask it's not a stupid question nicole if you don't know you don't know so she says i know it's a dumb question but what does bordello mean bordello um for lack of better words basically a whorehouse <laughs> it's where like girls would go to pimp themselves out basically i guess it was legal yeah um you know what i'm saying like you would go like i guess in, in the wild west remember they'd play the piano and they'd have whiskey and the girls upstairs with feathered bousiers would be upstairs you go up and you leave them a quarter and you go up and you spend the night and whatever and yeah. sailors looking yeah. for a good time um, King wants to know, Paranormal King Ross, uh, Ross Raspar, uh, my boss, Ross Rapazzo, wants to know, how many deaths do you know that are documented there um, at the hotel? Any? Oh, gosh. Um, there are several, actually, that, because Ooh, there are question, some suicides. Yes. Um, we also have a serial killer spirit there that oh. says he's killed 17 people. I don't know how many of them were at the hotel. Um, I've had other mediums that have come in and said, well, he was draining blood in the bathtub. So... I imagine it's, you know, there's got to be probably five to 10 that he's killed in the hotel alone. Wow. You guys love the demonic shit. All my listeners, they really love that. It was about <laughs> demons and Ouija boards. You guys are going to eat that shit up. Um, wow. That's, that's some real stuff. And that, that's, that's something you feel like this place. This is a question from me. I'm the historian. <laughs> um, does this place mm -hmm. drain you stuff? Does this place, you go home some nights and you're like, I had to take a day or two off. You know what I mean? Do you get Actually, drained? Actually, yes quite frequently by the time i get home i'm usually wanting to just sleep the whole day away that's carlos nunez i love demons lol you guys say that <laughs> i tell you there's some, there's some, you say that and it is i get it and it is fun but i tell you there's some scary you, you must have been scared stuff a couple of times in there maybe by yourself been kind of like i gotta oh, go yeah definitely yeah yeah there's yeah. definitely been 
there was one night actually in particular that I was there by myself. My guest had canceled due to COVID. And so I was like, hey, I'm just going to do a live investigation by myself here. And there was a man that was actually watching my live. And he goes, uh, there's a woman with a bun in her hair. And she's really angry that you're there. And I said, oh, I know who that is exactly. And I started getting a really bad migraine. And the door started rattling. And I was like, I'm going to go to bed. Maybe if I just lay down, the headache will go away. And then I, I think I kind of psyched myself out, you know. And I was like, well, yeah, that's, that's kind of what you want me to do. You want me to lay down so that I'm a little vulnerable. And I was like, nope, I'm just going to go home. So <laughs> Packed my stuff yeah. and went home. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, it, 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 at that point, like, obviously, like, we're in it for fun and we do our thing, but you know not to fuck around. When it comes to that, it's like, okay, I got to be, you got kids, right? You know, you got daughters and shit. So you don't want to, yeah. I mean, exactly, you don't know what's yeah. going to win. Um, Heather, Heather, call, oh, people are commenting real quick here. What's up, Jimmy? Jimmy Pentanino from Nesper's checking in. Um, Nesper is Judy uh, and Lorraine Warren's thing. Uh, Heather says that there are two. Um, on the website, I can't see. People keep commenting. Yes, I can't see. Okay, <laughs> all right. Where's all, yeah. <laughs> I, I see it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. The barber's daughter uh, drowning in the well across the yes. street. Wow. So yeah, Holbrook Farm, is that still there? Hornbrook or Hornby? I don't know about that. Um, with, with Rosie, though, we kind of, there's a different side to that whole thing. We actually believe due to just some, you know, psychic things that we've gotten from spirits and things, myself included and other spirits, we actually think she was being molested and she was thrown in the well to cover it up. Really? Wow. Yeah. Oh, this is this has got to be really early before they had DNA, 1920s or 30s or something. Yeah, Rosie, I think, was 1911 when she passed away. Good Lord. And she was she was only three. And then the other ones that I noticed that she put on there um, with the with the Shanley, the Shanley couple, you know, Beatrice and James, they did have three children. All three passed away under nine months of age. Wow. Yeah. So they, they've had a lot of tragedy there. And back then, for those of you listening that don't know, back then they didn't really have funeral homes. They held that, that stuff in the house, like at Lizzie Borden's and shit like that. They did it in the living room. They had the, yes. the you know what I mean? And a lot, is there, yes. there must be a great, there must be a cemetery by there. There's got to be. There is actually one not too far down the road. It's technically, it's on the Ellenville side, but it's is that where he's like buried? in the hotel. Is that where Mr. Shane is um, buried? I know that at, at least one of the children's graves has been found in there. I don't know about anybody else. I haven't looked myself, so I'm not exactly sure. There may be more, oh, though. Stephanie, this summer, me and Heather going to come down. You know me, I'm a cemetery guy. Us three are going to go fucking grave yeah. hopping. Go <laughs> that sounds killer. I know when I went up there towards Iowa, I, I almost stopped by, because you were saying, but the timing wasn't right. It was like 2 in the morning, but because we didn't get a chance to go see Danny at Hinsdale. You're fairly close to Hinsdale. You guys collaborate a lot. Um, so that's cool. Hey guys in chat, you guys get any questions? Uh, we're talking to Stephanie Smith. Um, let, I want to talk a little bit, switch gears off the hotel. And I want to talk about the, your baby, um, your fifth element, uh, mm -hmm. paranormal. How long have you been running that for? When did you find that? Um, I actually did it right after I started at the Shanley, decided that I needed kind of my own paranormal thing. I, it had been kind of in the works many years before that. I just never put a name to it. Um, I had a different name at one point. I was going to call it ether paranormal, um, but it just didn't click with me. And then four of my best friends, well, four of us, including myself, I guess, um, found out that we were all one of the natural elements, the earth, air, fire, and water. And oh. we have such a dear relationship that I incorporated that into my paranormal name, which is why it's fifth element. The ghost would be the fifth. Oh my God. I fucking love that. That's even cooler now that I've heard it that way. I figured it was something spiritual-ish or something. Sorry for burping. Yeah. I'm drinking a beer. <laughs> Sorry about burping. I'm having a beer on Friday night. Um, um, anyways, well, this is, like I said, this is a laid-back show. So feel free to do whatever you do. If the kids are crying, don't have to hide them from you or anything like that. You can let them bark, the dogs bark, whatever. Um, Heather <laughs> asked, which in life guide asked, um, hey, Steph, are there any Native American grounds connected to the property that you know of? Any old school stuff? Good question, Heather. Which in there are. The the town of Napanook um, is a Native American name as well. And wow. all of the entire area was all Native American. Now, there is kind of a dilapidated building kitty corner from us. And that used to be the general store. 
and there's a Native American man, like actual in loincloth, that has been seen standing out there looking over at the hotel. Um, down the road from us, there's a Dunkin' Donuts, and there's an obelisk monument to, and I don't, I don't know the date because I haven't looked at it myself, but it is, it is a monument to a family of white settlers that were actually murdered by Native Americans. I'm sure probably in retaliation for, you know, invading their lands and stuff like that. But, yeah, um, I have a yeah. Native American president. Wow. You guys literally have fucking everything. You got serial killers, Irish mob, <laughs> suicides, mirror barrel grounds. I mean, you guys, this is like, and it's not a, it's not an unknown gem because a lot of people know um, the, 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 the haunted Shanley hotel, or Shaley hotel. I keep mm -hmm. saying it wrong. There's so many fucking S names, but um, you really do a great job because um, on your personal page and on your paranormal pages and stuff, well, basically your personal page, you share a lot. Uh, of just going yeah. live here i am going by and you, it's always something lights up something moves they like you <laughs> they connect with you for they, sure they do i swear when they okay this probably sounds kind of weird for other people but when you're in the paranormal world it's like oh my gosh so when i get called a whore or you know this the see you next Tuesday word or something like that. I get excited because it's like, I've been accepted and I'm loved. <laughs> wow. Like they literally, <laughs> that's not, that's not pre-programmed spirit box shit. The C word. See you no, next exactly. Tuesday. <laughs> wow. And you, like you say, yeah. you take that as a gift because they're acknowledging you and they're taking you as a threat and, and they almost know you like family. You got a boyfriend there. You got people that hate you there. How many spirits you think are there in your opinion? Gotta be a, a baker's dozen, huh? 13, 14. Actually, we have over 50 that Shut are there up. regularly. Yeah. And then we have four portals that we know about. I think there's a fifth one probably in the seance room. Um, so we get, get random spirits place. in from time to time. Oh, I got to get out there. Some I mean, I, I, I've wanted to anyway, but wow. We, we never know who's coming through. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> Is there a certain objects you use for triggers for certain ones? Like, what do you use for your boyfriend? Do you wear a certain perfume for him? Do you go in trying to flirt with other guy? Like, what do you do to trigger this guy off? This ghost that that <laughs> follows you around? I'm curious. I just, I, I started flirting with him one night. There was, we had a large group, and you know, we put the flash. He has he has his own chair that nobody's allowed to sit in unless he gives you permission. And when I'm there, I make damn sure that people get permission or they're not sitting in it. And it's about respect for him. Huge, he's huge on respect. And I Jeez, sit typically really at his feet. And stuff? Coins oh, yeah. or whatever? I bring Maybe. cigarettes. Oh, yeah. I bring money, whiskey, you know, whatever they ask. I brought shoes. We brought stockings, makeup, whatever they ask me for. Um, the serial killer asked me for Irish spring soap. And I brought him that. <laughs> Dude, you're aiding the betting, Steph. You're aiding the betting a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He said it was to wash the blood off his hands. <laughs> wow. I wonder if there's still bodies on the grounds anywhere. I wonder if there's any sort of little in the wall. I mean, that place hasn't really been exactly examined, I wouldn't I think. think. So. so it's rumored that it was the hotel also has tunnels because it may have been a part of the Underground Railroad system. Now, there's a spot in the wow. basement where there's a portal in there but it has brand new cinder block behind it. Um, I say brand new because it's not 1800s, obviously, but um, definitely early right. 2000s. But seeing pictures from before, that cinder block was not there. And I've been told that there's tunnels that go back and off to the right and that there's rooms behind there. And I want to know what's in those rooms. <laughs> there could be bodies. There could be treasure. Who knows? Yeah. I love that. That That's honestly like, I mean, obviously the Oogie Boogie ghost and we're all in it for the conjuring and all that good stuff. But, but I, you know me, I love my history and I want the unknown. Yeah. There's so much shit that we don't know. And people just go, I like to go examine this place, but there's so much untapped potential at these places. And there's so much lore. I, I didn't realize the mob and serial killers and native Americans and up the road, there's a plaque about native Americans killing a white civilization family. Like, Probably who knows scalping them. Yeah. Wow, that's um. Doesn't didn't you? I think you remember you were telling me too. There's something else, a big cemetery down there or something, right? Isn't yeah, there something it is down the road. It's about five like, minutes away from the hotel. Okay, isn't there something else like not by Sleepy Hollow? But I, I remember you telling me there was something else up there. 
that you do tours oh, at. Yeah, we have, I well, there's um, there's Sleepy Hollow. I think that may be a couple hours away. Okay. But yeah, Isaac well, we, Washington's we, there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's there's all kinds of historic landmarks around New York in general, especially upstate, because you have like Knox's headquarters where General Washington came through with his troops and oh, and oh, you know man. different places. So you've got all this this war plus Native American slaughters all over New York. Oh, and man, you have to expect that there's a lot of spirits around. I mean, I could be just driving down the road and happen to catch something out of the corner of my eye. And there was one night I was actually driving and I literally saw a man in front of my car and he stepped over the railing off to the side. And as I drove past, he was gone. And Holy was, shit. You, you know, and it was just a shadow of a man. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, who was that? What was he doing? You know? All these questions came up, but I had to keep driving, obviously, so I couldn't stop and investigate. But <laughs> well, I got to ask you: a question. What in New York. Do, do you do you think you're a sensitive or, or even a medium? Do you think that this stuff comes to you easier than most people? Oh, absolutely! I I consider myself a spiritual medium. Wow, very cool. Because I get I get messages like with the seance room in particular, we have you know family members and friends that come in for our guests. And I sit there and, and I, I have my little notebook and I write whatever I'm getting. And I sometimes draw pictures of whatever they're showing me in, you know, my third eye type of thing. And I just kind of, you know, hey, who does this belong to anybody? You know, and most of the time somebody speaks up and says, oh, yeah, that's mine. You know, that's my family member or whatever. So and then we yeah. kind of piece it together. At that. That's yeah, that's yeah, that's very cool. There's a lot. Wow. It's almost overwhelming the the amount of stories that this place is incorporated. And then, like you say, for you to even leave there and just to see that down the road and to feel that other places, which kind of brings me to another question. Everybody in chat's having fun. I'm glad you guys are having fun, but please feel free to ask questions. But trust me, I got a million of them for you. I was going to ask you, has this mm -hmm. started for you in Alaska? Was this is this something you've been with it a did. long time? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I used to, in to investigate. Um, it's called the Historic Anchorage Hotel. It's in Anchorage, Alaska. Ooh. And every winter during for rendezvous season, there's always a carnival. We're weird. So we have like outhouse races and parades and stuff like that. So <laughs> yeah, um, like an the hotel room. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> outhouse races, you know. <laughs> so I would awesome. stay right there at the hotel and we do our for rendezvous things and carnival things during the daytime and investigate during the night. Wow. Or for six months of the year, the that's every day, right? Because you guys get dark or something out there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that's what prompted you to move to New York. Was it a job opportunity? I mean, just no, curious. No, I actually met and married my husband um, in Alaska. He was from New York. And when we had the baby, he wanted to move back to New York because this is where he's from and raised her yep. there. So you left the igloo for a fucking high rise, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just doing shit. Um, hey, uh, Ross goes, you watching SmackDown? Yeah, Ross, WrestleMania weekend. Shout out to The Undertaker. He's going to the Hall of Fame tonight. I'm a big wrestling fan. Undertaker got me into the paranormal, man. When I saw The Undertaker come out when I was like seven and I saw this guy dressed like a dead dude, I was like, I just started getting intrigued, man. Paranormal's incorporated by all that stuff. Steph, I was going to ask you something too on a side note. What do you like? What do you like for movies? Do you like horror movies traditionally or do you like, I mean, most paranormal people do, or do you like comedies, romance? What's your go-to for a movie? I always go for the horror. Halloween 1978 is my top one. Oh, God bless your soul. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the original is the... And people go, well, it's kind of boring and slow. I'm like, shut the lights off, stay alone, and watch it. You'll get it. <laughs> right? uh, my whole thing is answer. Michael Myers. I love Michael Myers. You know, the tall, dark, and not really creepy, but you know, he's family oriented and things like that. So, you know, <laughs> it's all it, the thing is, with him is that as much as I love my Freddie and Jason, there's no gore with Mike. It's kind of, you leave it to your imagination. So you're actually the serial killer. He mm -hmm. goes to stab her and you, your mind just goes to shit. What did he do? And, and that, that's the scary yeah. psychological. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I actually, as you know, what side note, um, I actually met the original Mike Myers in Salem, Massachusetts. The guy that got unmasked. Oh, Remember wow. Jamie Curtis took his mask? off yeah i got a picture uh -huh, with him yeah. all, and i got me taking his fucking mask off i waited in line for about a half hour i paid 10 bucks uh but he signed my original halloween copy on dvd he put to adam kill them all mike myers 
And uh, that is I so awesome. Name that <laughs> yeah, I, got, I, got, I brought my Mike Myers mask and I had it next to him, like I was actually unmasking him myself, and I acted all shocked. I get that picture. I'll upload it sometime. I'll, I'll put you in the, in the comments. You can see it. So that's cool. Yeah, Mike's my boy. That's yeah. awesome. Um, what's uh, what about music? Which I like to mix it up a little bit. What's your go-to for tunes? Um, it kind of depends on the day. A lot of times I do hip hop and then on days that, you know, I'm feeling kind of pissy or whatever. I listen to some Miranda Lambert. <laughs> oh, that's right. Well, hey, uh, drop me some hip hop. We're talking Eminem, Cypress Hill, what are we, R. Kelly? Um, Drake. Oh, no, come on. Nobody listens to R. Kelly now. <laughs> I know. I, I, want, I want to get her a little <laughs> 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 Kelly. shit drake is cool that's he's, he's talented that's cool but i love my old school stuff too i i still love dr dre and snoop and you know so <laughs> that's killer i love yeah nwa and snoop and oh you can't you're gonna love yeah. that last absolutely um let's see which in nature um you guys are all rocking in chat thank you jimmy for checking in all you guys in chat are all fantastic we're talking to stephanie smith um, a last born and raised, but now she's in New York, uh, running tours. So w what's your schedule on that thing? And can people, uh, where can people, we got a half hour to go, but where can people book tours? Obviously the website, but is it weekly? Is yep. it every weekend? It's, it's daily actually. So if no you chat. go to the website, you, you can actually book individual rooms if you want to. And there's a description of the rooms and things that have happened in there. Um, but honestly, the way to go right now, especially it, it's cheaper on a weekday, obviously, but you would book a friends and family. So you get like up to seven or eight people and you book the entire hotel, you get the entire place to yourself and, you know, you don't have to worry about other people, you know, disturbing your investigations and things like that. Or wait, 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 wait. You, wait, wait. So. you can spend the night there overnight, like a literal hotel. It's not just a bullshit tour thing. It's like, you can spend no, the night there. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my God. Oh, I had yep. to do that. I, I, I mean, out, I spent the night at Lizzie Borden's. Oh, I got to go there. I go there. Out breakfast in the morning. So, yeah, I keep the coffee going all night. <laughs> <laughs> of course you do. Oh, uh, killer. Heather just, uh, Witch and Life Guy just shared a great picture. Do you see that picture in chat, yes. Steph? You, what room is that? Do you that know that? Yes, I do. That is Anna's room. Anna is the one in the bordello that really loves the bearded men. Oh, that's my room. <laughs> yeah. I'll bring a couple bucks. Hey, she, I'll bring a couple. I'll bring a couple twos. I really impress her. <laughs> that's really cool. Look at I love that. Yeah. Look at the wood floor, the old door. The bed's gorgeous. Wow, you guys run a great a great show there, uh, Stephanie. Wow, that's thank you. Um, we definitely do. Our Nicole asked, great to question Nicole. Thank you so much. She's a great supporter. She's got a show. I bet you she'd love to have you on her show. Um, she does great on yeah. Wednesday nights. Um, what is the most haunted room there, in your opinion, as far as bedrooms and stuff go? So we can spend the night in that one. <laughs> Literally, they are all haunted, every single one. I have had an experience in every single room that I've slept in. Um, it's like and that includes the bathroom. Completely. You are not alone in the bathroom either. Jesus, really? Serious. Like I've taken showers obviously there and and I've had Joe standing outside my door, you know, outside the shower door. We have a couple ghost cats. I had one of the cats laying on my towel one one day. So you are oh. never going anywhere. So yeah, but by the way, Joe is her boyfriend her, her unofficial boyfriend, her ghost boyfriend that she's never actually seen. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he, he's my very active. Man. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a mafia guy, and uh, he likes to take control. He tries to boss stuff around. Um, wow, because I, I just I see you going live, and I just always see when you do use equipment, it's always going ape shit, and you're always recording yeah, yeah. stuff. And um, is there any certain page that you run besides? Do you have any like group pages or anything? I should know this. I usually do more research, but no, and I, should I know sure don't. Because you really don't. Yeah, you're just my personal just... page and, and my Fifth Element Paranormal. Those are the only two. I just say I've been friends with you on Facebook for a year, and I don't see you really posting on other sites, or it just you 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 promote a lot of people's shit in your own stuff. But um, yeah. and of course, um, with Fifth Element, you're very spiritual. Well, I share uh, certain moons and stuff posts. I saw you yeah. memes. Yeah. Well, right now I'm on a posting ban, so I can't post to any groups at all. <laughs> Son of a bitch! I got one of those last week too. My friend thought I blocked. Him. I go, no, I, God forbid you share 
things. Perry Unity, I got blocked for sharing and inviting people. Fucking Facebook. Oh, mine was a 60-day ban this time for posting a serial killer meme to a serial killer page. <laughs> oh, come on. Look at that. Uh, yeah, what was it? I gotta it know was what was it. posted two years ago. Oh, of course. Was it Jeffrey Dahmer eating a white guy or something saying people taste like chicken or something like that? Yes, yes, that's exactly what it was. Yep. That's fucking hilarious. Ooh, look at uh, Heather just shared, Witchin just shared an outside picture of the hotel. My God. Yeah. I love so it. What you're seeing is, is the left-hand corner, which goes to our great room. That part in the back that looks like a, a bit of a barn, that's our oh, gentleman's quarters. Or okay. upstairs. Um, to the left of all that is a little side street. And right on the other side of that side street is the well where Rosie's body was found. Oh, jeez. Um, dude, between the plaque in town, the cemeteries, the well, and this gorgeous three, I'd say four-story house with a little Amityville window in the very top, if you guys can look. Look, it's like yes, there's something actually, in the window. <laughs> the third well, window. The whole place was settled by the Dutch, and the Amityville-looking window is pretty prominent on a lot of the buildings. Wow. Such a sexy room, Heather put about the room. It's true. Wow, that room is great. Um, okay, I want to talk a little bit about you, Nicole, because this show's not about the Shanley or Shaley or whatever. It's about Nicole. Um, I'm not Nicole, I'm sorry, Stephanie. Nicole so Nicole asked the question. <laughs> yes. I've I've had a beer and I smoked a little bit of a joint, so sue me. It's Friday night in Maine. I'm relaxing. <laughs> um <laughs> Thank you guys for listening, by the way. Nicole, great question. She wants to know, Steph, uh, Stephanie Smith, do you have any bucket list um, places that you'd I like to go do. to you really haven't yet? I have tons of places I want to go. Um, I, I want to go to Salem. I want to do all the touristy stuff, but then one of my past lives was actually in Salem, well, technically Danvers, and so I want to do the, not, the non-touristy stuff and, like, see if I can figure out who I was in a past life, if I can find any information on myself, you know, basically. Um, you commented. When, I went to, when I went to Danvers, the Rebecca Nurse Homestead, one of the witches, you commented on that. Remember that last yeah. year saying that one of your your great aunt or your, or your cousin or something was involved, right? Am I remembering right? And we got to do a discussion um, about that. No, but I think, I don't remember. I thought you were related. Aren't you, you related somebody to one of the witches? No, um, the, I think what it was, was that I had said that the attachment that I had was from my previous life and her name was Millie. And somebody had said that Rebecca's nurse, Rebecca nurse's family called her Millie. Yes, yes, yes. And you commented saying, I think that's Millie. And I said, how did you know that's her nickname? Cause that's a lot of people know that. And that's right. Yeah. No shit. You've never been. You've I, never been I, to I did look into no that shit. further and. Yeah, it. She could not have actually been the one I was. I was having the attachment issue with just because she died at a later date than than what my Millie did. So wow, later later than or earlier than sixteen ninety two. She died yeah, in sixteen. Wow. Yeah, my past life stuff. When Millie died, it had to be at least ten years before that. So sixteen eighty two around there. Oh, okay. But what if what? If because she was alive back then, though. What if it was her, but she yes. was just alive? You don't know. She I had mean, to have been. You think fast? Hundred percent. It it may be possible. I just it's hard for me to piece the you know the puzzle pieces together until I get there and figure out where I'm way, to go and where I can find information. Yeah, either way, you got to get there and uh, you got to check that out. Well, we got a question way back a long time ago. Ken Bull, thanks, Ken, for listening. Do you catch anyone on EVPs at all? Have you caught anyone on EVP? Great question. Oh my gosh. If you go to YouTube, you will see all kinds of EVPs that we've gotten. Um, there are so many incredible ones. We've gotten, um, there was one with little Rosie. We were having a birthday party. Well, I wasn't there. It was, you know, the owner and some other people, but basically they were having a party there and you could hear one of them ask, you know, who all wants cake? And you hear a couple people say, oh, I do, I do, I do. But then you hear a little girl's voice say, I want cake too. And it is the cutest thing ever. Oh, but the hotel my. is very known for the for its EVPs. Um, Joe gives a little bit of insight onto his life on EVPs. Usually, he won't actually respond like on like the spirit boxes to personal questions. But on EVP, he's always said that he killed 107 people 
his weapon of choice was a knife because it was more personal that way, things like that. So he's just trying to show off to his girlfriend. Yeah, crazy. He's just um, trying to show off for you. He's just trying to show off for you, <laughs> Steph. <laughs> he really killed a hundred. So when I ask the question, he won't answer me. No answer. He's other mad. People, but not that. So I he's think he just mad. like I'm the girlfriend, so I'm not supposed to be involved or know that information. That's how I feel about it. Wow. Uh, Nicole asked if that was the EVP was the scary uh, scariest. Um, if you if you're allowed, well, basically, what's the scariest that you're allowed to share? I guess would that be it? As far as him, one like of the scariest that that we had one night was it was um, just a friend of mine, and he he's got a bunch of equipment and stuff. His name is John, and he it, it, like nobody had booked the rest of the hotel, so it was literally only me and him there, and um, we were up in Adam's room actually, the serial killer. And oh my god, his name was my name. Yes, yes. <laughs> and we were listening back, and he, we caught a demonic growl on EVP. It was crazy, and it was so loud and clear. It was nuts. Wow. Um, Nicole, I got a question from me, Adam the Historian Ghost Hunter. What, what is the YouTube channel we can find this stuff at? It's under uh, the Haunted Shanley Hotel, or if you look under I Want Cake 2, you'll find that, that EVP in, in particular and a bunch of others. Oh, shit, I stole that from Terry York. Terry York literally asked, what is the YouTube? Sorry, Terry. I asked it without looking down because I was watching Ricochet from wrestling as I was I'm trying to do five <laughs> things at once. Um, but no shit, yes, that's that's amazing because you're all about the evidence. And you're like me. I love going live. I love recording because if I catch something, I want the world to see it. As much as I don't yeah, mind seeing exactly. it myself, right? You know what I mean? And you know, you're in two of this shit. Yeah. Like, you have your life you've got your you know your beautiful kids i see the pictures um of your little girls they keep you busy yeah. but but this hotel and paranormal itself has got a real big place in your heart right hugely it's something that i will never give up ever it's ever i am so far into it and i love what i do so much i love these spirits as dysfunctional as a of a family as it is the spirit family that i have are they're literally you know just that they are my family Right down to the serial killer. If if somebody <laughs> is misbehaving or even taunting him, I get upset and take it personal. I love that. That's called respect because it's still a soul. And people fuck up. They pay their dues with our maker. But for now, he's there and he's granting you. The, so you, you literally talk to a mafia dude, a serial killer, um, suicide victims. And you go home and talk to your husband and kids. And it's just, yep. that's just Stephanie. That's just you. And your husband, you're like, hey, check it out. Here's a meatloaf. I'm going to the haunted hotel. And your husband stays home. Yeah. <laughs> and that, but that's cool because it's, it is that way. Some dudes do it and the, and the girls stay home and vice versa. And this is your thing. Okay, Nicole, another great question. Um, do you have a favorite um, divination? Or I'm sorry. Um, divination. <laughs> yeah. Div divination tool? Um, like a grounding tool? Or <laughs> like dowsing rods and things like that. My favorite is my pendulums. I have like eight different pendulums with different stones on them. Those are my favorite things to use. Um, I do oracle card readings and tarot readings as well, so I use oh. those as well sometimes. But but my you do my those uh, is my favorite. I'm sorry to cut you off, but do you do those professionally? Because please plug that. Can people just message you yeah, and set I up do. something, and donate or something, or charge yeah, or whatever? Um, yep, I charge twenty one dollars for a reading, and that's that's it. I do my cool. um, I, I don't have like a set lineup of you know people sometimes do past present future i get like eight or nine decks and i lay them all out and and start pulling from each one so i do things a bit differently than than what other people do oh that's very cool um you guys check her out stephanie smith um it says harrington in parentheses but her, stephanie smith what she goes by um she's one of the most humble people and she promotes everybody she promotes chris sanders and me and danny klaus and just um, um all the dudes from ghost hunters and just you're very big into promoting people that you respect and i think it, it was just about, about time that someone gave you a shot back and i couldn't be happier oh, thank that you, you. Your no, no i appreciate you. that very much i do i i love you know how the, the different ways that people actually investigate i love how they are i love learning from other people as well you know more seasoned people and things like that um so i'm always happy to promote and share other people's pages and things just because I think 
it, it really is about pair unity. And I know people think that's kind of cliche and everything, but I think is if we all kind of just supported each other instead of putting each other down, that's probably what, you know, if you see some of my posts sometimes where I get tired of the drama, I get tired of people bashing each other. It just, it drives mm-hmm. me nuts. Like, stop. I agree. You know, it's, it serves no purpose in this field. We're all here to do the same thing. But that's right. And I agree. And that's why people are like, I'm not going to be like bullyish, but people like you and me and us, we kind of rise above that, stick to ourselves, and we promote the ones that promote us. Like you've tagged me mm-hmm. and things like, hey, Adam, this is right up your alley. And then I've seen these, oh, right up your alley or whatever. And then that's what you do. And like you say, it's kind of pure unity. And I think it's better than just, we're all here to learn and teach each other. This shit I can show you in Maine and New England. And this shit you can show me in New York and Alaska. And let's just learn and help yeah. each other. Why not, dude? Like, I think that's great. What a great attitude, uh, Stephanie. Uh, Witch in Life Thank guy, you. Heather, um, you're welcome. She's got the link above the gravetalks.com mentions that Stephanie grew up in a haunted house and that her and her mother uh, ran from it. Can you talk about that? Great yeah. question, Witch in Life guide. Yeah, um, it was actually in Grafton, North Dakota. It was before we, we moved to Alaska. Wow. And um, there was a woman, I believe her name was Mary, and she, we'd have weird things like water pouring from, not just dripping, but pouring down from the ceiling where there were no pipes. We'd have water running, you know, downstairs in the kitchen. We'd go upstairs or go in the kitchen to go turn it off. And the bathroom upstairs started turning on. And it would just keep us running up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, it drove my dog mad. We had to get rid of the dog. Um, the cat, wow. cat kind of, kind of the same thing. The very last night we were there, it, I will never forget it. You remember how they used to do the Sunday night Disney family movie? Yeah. Well, we were yeah. watching. Yeah, we were watching the movie, and um, right after the movie was usually my bedtime because I had school the next morning. And we were hearing the doors upstairs slam. And it was just my mom and I in the house. And I had my cat sitting on my lap. And my mom goes upstairs to see if somebody had broken in upstairs or something. And, you know, she checks her bedroom. She checks the bathroom. She checks my room. Nobody's in there. Her bedroom door slams again. She goes back, opens the door, and she gets slapped right across the face. And I will never forget my mother running down the stairs hysterically crying and there's a huge red handprint on the side of her face and she grabbed me she didn't want to go back upstairs by herself and we stuck together and and packed a bag real quick i grabbed the cat and we were out of there wow that's something straight out of fucking amityville like you know as much as i love these big like i say this every week but as much as i love these big places like amityville and all these big stories there's literally thousands of these stories throughout the world this is in alaska correct no this is actually in grafton north dakota it was oh right shit you said that already that's right I don't yeah. think I've ever heard of anybody living in South Dakota. That's a first for me. <laughs> no offense, but that's just, I've never, that's, and that just shows you there's haunted shit everywhere. That's enough for you guys to leave in the middle of the night, basically. Um, yep. The, there must've been stuff leading up to that where you kind of knew and you knew it wasn't just drafts and for it to leak where there's yeah, no pipes. No. That's not normal. That's Alistair Crowley shit, man. Yeah. There was, there was a lot more that went on that went on for a really long time and, and I'll wow. never forget when, because we were renting the house, and I'll never forget when the landlady was showing us the house, I remember specifically she would not come over the threshold into the house, and neither would her dog. And I remember what? wondering why, because any other landlord would usually walk you around the house to show you, but she and the dog would not come over that threshold. Wow. What is that? I and mean, you knew that. At what age were you then? You said, like, you were young? Yeah, I was, like, six when that happened. And you fucking recognize that, Stephanie. You've had this intuition yeah. for your whole life. You've had this intuition yeah. since you were that young. Um, Nicole, another great question. I'm sorry, I'm going to touch gears on some questions here. Uh, Nicole mm-hmm. wants to know, um, what are some of your favorite books uh, and or authors? Um, okay, so this probably sounds really corny, but I like Bodice Ripper books. <laughs> what is so, it? Like, what is it? Historical romance. Oh, I no, sure. Bodice first. <laughs> Historical romance books. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love Catherine Coulter, uh, Judy Devereaux, ones that really do some really good, you know, historical romance ones. Oh, that's cool. Stephen King? I do love Stephen King, yes. Um, I tried to read, oh gosh, what was it? It had a bunch of short stories in it, including The Mist. Oh, uh, like... Um, 
skeleton crew. Oh, skeleton crew. Well, you know. Yeah, and there was one you... story in that that I threw the book and would not pick the book up for a while, and it was the one with the monkey that claps its symbols whenever somebody's going to die. Oh my god! Um, a monkey. Yeah, I had one of those monkeys that clapped its symbol just randomly, and it used to scare the crap out of me. And I had to give it to my aunt because I'm like, I can't have it in my house anymore. <laughs> Yeah, the one, the one with the little, the little fez hat, and it just looks evil. Um, not what this, not monkey shine. Shit, what the hell's the name of it? I can't yeah, remember. Yeah. yeah, but it was in Skeleton Crew book. Oh, Skeleton Crew, yes. Um, have you ever been to Maine? No, I haven't. Uh, mm -mm. Okay, well, because say when you come to Maine, Heather and I are going to kidnap you. <laughs> I know Heather will. <laughs> like, oh, I like Stephanie. She's coming with me. We're going to take you in our police truck that we have that the back doors don't unlock, and we're going to bring you up to Stephen King's house in Bangor. We're going to go. We're going to show you some shit. You got to come up our way because I know. That would be amazing. Yeah, you would show us the stuff your way, and seriously, and I said it to anybody: if people come up to Maine, I would love to show you. If you want to see. Stephen King, where he grew up, his house now, where mermaids are seen, Salem. We know Danvers. I know where, where Tatuba, the black witch, who told the girls about oh, witchcraft. Wow. I know where all that is in yeah. Danvers. That was Salem Village. Well, people go and buy incense and get their, their palms read for 85 bucks in downtown Salem. I'm off in fucking Salem. I'm off in Danvers looking where the witches were actually were. <laughs> you know I me? Mean? I want the real shit. As much as I love my sage, don't get me wrong. But I mean, I, if you're down to see that shit, uh, Stephanie, I would love to. Oh, really absolutely. Respect, you know, all well, that good shit. There's a couple shit. of dolls. There's a couple of my haunted dolls that say that they're from Danvers as well. And so I want to take them with me. Dolls, that's right. Yeah, wow, what a lot. You, oh, that's right. What are the names of some of your closest dolls? That's right. You bring them with you a lot. Shoot, I, I forgot. Do. About that. I just, I just adopted. Um, Eden just came in the mail today, and she's actually an 1800 Victorian vessel. Uh, beautiful wow. doll. Pretty uh, piece. I have a lot of. Amara is my top girl. My she's a little pocket size, and she goes right in my purse. She goes to all my doctor's appointments, everything. She's always with me. Um, Mama's helper. Pixie is eleven. <laughs> my, my daughter loves Pixie. She's loved her so much. I've got so many. It's <laughs> it's it's a lot. <laughs> no, it's called it's called. Uh, Stephanie, I hate to say this, and, and you you look at your pictures and you look at your post, and you're a family girl and you're a mom, but we're weirdos. We really are, you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I mean, let's face it. What we do when when you tell you well, when people go out like, oh, I go out for steak at Applebee's, and I'm in a dart league, and I play. What do you do? Well, I go to a haunted hotel, and I look in graveyards, and I collect haunted dolls. You're a fucking weirdo. <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> this is our people, um, and I love everybody yes. in chat. <laughs> And uh, we got we got about 15 minutes left. We can go a little bit over. Is there anything I haven't really touched on or anything you'd like to shout out while we got 15 minutes? That I haven't um, really I don't, I don't know offhand. I don't know. <laughs> well, well, people fifth are asking some great questions in there. So well, I pre yes, everybody in chat, dude, the, uh, they're all pretty. I'll have to add you on next time too. I'll have you on Saturday on a vodcast where it's visual. I do the, that yeah. too. That's something this. We'll do that. I kind of just mix and match. I'm trying to go through my friends list before, and I reach out to some people that are my friends, but there's so many people that are my friends list that if they're not known, they should be. And I know we're not going to get yeah. rich doing this. I know we're not going to get movie stars doing this, but you're someone I've respected and known for a while and you deserve some of the spotlight because you give it to everybody else and you do and you know so fucking much. Um, you ever thought about writing a book? No, I did a couple, couple of Christmases ago. I got everybody at the hotel, all of us workers, um, special, really nice books that we could start writing our experiences down. And I just haven't done it myself, although I should. <laughs> yeah, you should. Diary for your daughters. Um, do your daughters show any interest in this? Your kids? Do they show anything? My, like, what you my oldest? Yes. My oldest is 22. She definitely does. Um, she, she and her husband both have interest in it and they oh, dabble a little awesome. bit in some witchcraft as well that they're getting started in um, my kid. middle child nope <laughs> this this is too much for her she doesn't like it <laughs> really um yeah my four-year-old like i said loves my dolls um she has gone with me sometimes to the hotel when i need to clean and stuff during the day and i shit you not she played ball with rosie it was the coolest thing ever and well, some of the other came down 
I was gonna say, even yes, though she but, doesn't well, like, know that, she's she's in to, she's in tune at that age. Wow, she plays ball yeah, with Rosie. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. We were in the gentlemen's quarters, and I said, first of all, I was kind of worried because Adam had made threats against my daughter, and um, when I turned on one of the spirit boxes, I hear Frank and Anna, both of them from the Bordello, saying she's protected and enjoy her. I was like, oh, Damn thank right. you so much, you guys, for, for protecting my little one while we're here, you know. So it's so I, nice to have that kind of respect and that love from them that they're willing to protect my children, too. So I, I, I think spirits uh, spirits also know, I mean, you know what I mean? It's like a wild cat knowing that it's a kid. So they have some, of course, there's bad spirits, but I think they pay respect. They know it's your kids and they respect you and they respect the kid, yeah. which is cool. Yeah. Four years old, yeah. you're in tune to that shit. But in, and God bless your middle one. If she don't push her into it, you let her go on her own. Well, she you know, needs and if to you're... actually be able to see energies and auras and things like that, but something happened and she just got out of it and decided to turn it all off. So I wonder if she's got your gift and she's trying to block it, but that ain't gonna happen. You know what I mean? Do you think so? Yeah. If she if she decides to, because my oldest did the same thing, it seeing the spirits and hearing them all the time used to scare her. And so she turned it off for a long time. And then after she had her first baby, she decided, I, you know, that she wanted to turn it back on. So that's what she's been doing. It's young. It's, it's, there's plenty of time and you're there and you're, Mm -hmm. you're a good mom and you're there when they're ready. And for now you're doing your own thing and you can, you can't push it. You could, it's, 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 yeah. It's not just people go, well, you know, oh, it's a hobby. This is life and death. This is afterlife. It's not just a hobby in life. We all live, we all die. And I think we all want to know what yeah. the fuck goes on. It's not like it's just a, a dart league or we're playing football or squares at a fucking pool hall. This is paranormal is life. Whether you, you're into it or not, it's, I want to be aware. And you're very aware and you're very opening. And, and, and do you use gems uh, or sage or anything? Do you? Do any grounding? I, I sometimes actually I sage my house, um, but I have tons and tons of crystals, and certain ones call to me on certain nights, and so those are the ones that I'll actually like keep on me, like skin to skin contact with them. But I mean, I have I have so many, so I I definitely do crystal work. You know, um, I have all kinds of different little herbs and things like that that I make things with. You know, different spell jars and things. So oh, you do your everything. own little things. <laughs> Like Heather, Heather grows her own lavender and all that little shit. So you like all that little yeah, witchy yeah. stuff. It's, like, it's not <laughs> evil. Witchy isn't evil, right? It's old herbalist no, type not shit. At all. Well, um, and Heather, I, I, because oh, go ahead. I, I'm Catholic Sorry. now, and so being Catholic, obviously, with Catholicism, you know, anything that I'm doing now is pagan. Pagan is of the devil. I.e., I'm going to hell. And my mentor, <laughs> Christopher Moon, Sorry. I said, I said, Christopher, I said what do you do? Because am I supposed to be going to church every day and confessing these as sins or what? And his father, who is a devout Catholic, he looks at me and he says, if it feels wrong, don't do it. And I was like, oh, that is so simple. And so that's pretty much the letter of the law that I, that I follow now. I'm not doing any of it to hurt anybody at all. I'm doing it to help people, help spirits, you know, living and dead. And I won't cross that line where it gets into like hexing people or things like that. Cause I don't want it to come back on me. Cause that's part of my belief is that it will come back on me. So, um, you know, that's kind of what I stay into is, is I do a bit of the, the white light and I say a little bit of the green, which is, you know, the, the herbs and things like that. So always wow. good intentions. Stephanie Smith, amazing talk. We got about 10 minutes left. We can go a tiny bit over. I'm usually about ten, mm-hmm. uh, about three or four minutes over if you don't mind yeah. the time. We got about 10 minutes left. If you guys want to ask some questions, go ahead and ask her. She's a great soul, a great person. She's in it for all the right fucking reasons. You know, fame and fortune come, that's one thing, but she's in it for, for the respect, the love, and just basically it's a hobby that's that's just you're in it to, to, to just to do why not, right? And and I love that because you're one of the down to earth yeah. people in my life. It's uh, really and I turned you. into much more than a hobby, though. It's it's my life. <laughs> no, that's cool because because you and me talk a lot. I don't just like I said. I get some guests that I barely know, but I really try to reach out for the ones that I know. And I know you very well. We've known you for a while. We like each other's shit, and you're always posting pretty good shit out there. You like my stuff. You're very informative, and I I couldn't thank you more for coming on. Um, we do have one no, more. I appreciate more it very much. Oh, absolutely. I, I'm, I, I sent you, I'm like, I need, a, I need a picture. You're like, I'm at an investigation tomorrow. It was like last week. And I was like, killer. And I went on your page and I saw like you going live and 
Do you do, t- do you do TikTok? No. Actually, I do. I do have a few things on there. Um, some of it, I also do beach body workouts. And so some of it's like my antics doing beach body. <laughs> Give that a so, shout out. I want I people to follow everything, Stephanie, everything. What is that? I want people to follow you. Seriously. The, the beach, beach body, it's at home work, workouts. It's like, it's kind of like the Netflix of work. No, no, no. You, 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 you TikTok, you TikTok, you YouTube, all that shit. What's your TikTok at? Just Stephanie Smith? Oh, let me, I'll actually have to look. Um... I don't really do that. I was thinking about Evan does that. I was thinking about doing it. I don't know. Is it really fun? I think it's fun. Yeah, mine is Stephanie Smith 3833. Stephanie Smith 3833. Are you on Instagram? Uh, Oh, yeah, you are. I just added you today. I I don't usually use it. Well, I added Um, you today and you added me. That's right, too. Yeah, yeah. I get on it sometimes. It's Stephanie S. NY. Okay. And Facebook, and you're on uh, mm-hmm. fifth F. I mean, I'm sorry, five, excuse me, five th element. Yes, paranormal. Yep. And of course, the uh, yep. Scaly Hotel. Um, sorry, I was trying to hold a burp in a fucking beer, man. I tell you. <laughs> um, and you're, okay, so your TikTok is Stephanie Smith. What does Heather want? Heather wants to know she can follow you. Stephanie Smith, what? Which one? TikTok. Uh, three eight three three, three eight three three. Only if you're five three. Wah, 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 wah. So <laughs> yeah. hey, check it out. <laughs> I love the old school hip hop too. Um, Heather, uh, by speak of the devil is the devil is. Uh, which <laughs> life guy to ask you uh, if you've ever been to Aurora bo- or seen oh, the seen. Aurora yeah. Borealis? Borealis. Was it Borealis. Called the, the we, call, we just call it the Northern Life, but. Northern um, Lights, yeah. Yeah, I've seen it a few times. Um, it has to be, it's usually in January because in Anchorage, Anchorage is the southern part of Alaska. It has to be extremely cold and extremely clear for us to see it from Anchorage. You know, oh. once you head, head north, further north into Alaska, you can see it a lot, a lot clearer. And the, the colors are stunning. I, I never oh, get tired cool. of the beauty of Alaska. I really don't. It's so well, gorgeous. I feel, like, I feel like you and me are bonded because I smoke weed, marijuana called Northern Lights. So I think we would be <laughs> <laughs> um, Alaska, honestly, I had a friend, Bill, from Alaska Anchorage. He used to go party in Seattle and shit. And uh, I hear yeah. it's you guys get the most uh, missing person reports out there or some shit like that, right? I wouldn't doubt it. Now, what, there was that one movie with the UFO stuff that was like up in Barrow, way up north. But honestly, and I'm not denying the the presence of aliens in Alaska at all. I know that they are there. Have but you seen I them? Think a lot of them. Well, I thought I did once. Yes, was, talk about like, it, please. I, I was outside skateboarding, and I was probably like nine. And I was skateboarding on my sidewalk, and I saw this huge round cloud slowly moving over my head. But the the fact that there were no other clouds, and this was like a, a grayish colored cloud, and it was perfectly round, I ran inside telling my mother, I swore up and down, I was I saw aliens, and she, of course, did not believe me at all. So, <laughs> What? Wow. Alaska's so yeah. fucking open. Have you seen anything in New York? Any aliens or any lights or anything crazy? No? No, but um, 20 minutes from the hotel is a little town called Pine Bush. And Pine Bush is known for its UFO activity. And there actually is a fabulous um, UFO museum in Pine Bush. Oh, shut the front door, dude. This place, this this Shaley Hotel, Shaley Hotel has got everything in a well, okay, okay, I'm gonna switch gears now. What about Bigfoot and monsters, Dover Demon, all that so stuff? The, you believe in that? Yep the the UFO uh, museum actually touch bases on the some paranormal stuff as well as Bigfoot as well. So oh fuck, there, there's yeah, a I'm lot moving up. There. I'm moving up there. Make room for me, Stephanie. I'm coming up. Make me a fucking yeah. spare room. <laughs> I gotta go up there. This is the fucking. This is the pinnacle of of New York. It's I mean, amazing. a Native American town with every. Everything, serial killers and everything. I mean, you're in heaven yeah. because you can't. I mean, you must love it. Good for you. That's killer. I do. I'm so, wow. I, I swear, I am, I feel like more of myself when I'm at the hotel and and meeting people, not just other investigators, but even just just general public that you know book a room because they want to try it out because they've never done anything like this before. They've never investigated and getting to take them around the hotel and introduce them to all the spirits and 
you know, letting them use the equipment and see what kind of reactions they get and things that they feel. It's, it's amazing. It really is. Even on quiet nights, because you, you know as well as I do, it's not going to always be active. But there are some nights when it's really quiet. But even just the quiet nights, it's neat to get to, you know, go over everything with people. And you meet people from all different ways. So it's pretty neat. I love that. I mean, I a lot of friends pa- that way. I can hear the passion in your voice and I see it on Facebook. You just, like yeah. I said, man, like you, you just love what you do. You want to share it I with do. people. Life's too short. And, and, you, and you, you're doing the mom thing. You're doing the wife thing. You're doing the living life thing on top of all that. And you're, you're running the show. Um, we got about a, about a minute or two left. We can go a little bit over. Can, uh, where can people book mm-hmm. a room and or tour? For the house. So if you go to the, the Shanley <laughs> Hotel website, um, like I said, you can either book an individual room on there, or if you want to book a friends and family where um, if they, you get the entire hotel for up to seven people and you don't got to worry about the public or anything, it's just you, um, then you would just go ahead and email at the, I think it's bookings at shanleyhotel.com. It's on the website, but you would just email Kelly, the owner, and she'd help you, you know, set up a date and things like that. So now, uh, now a room, does that come with a tour by you or someone? Does someone get an inf- informational tour if they want it before their room? Yeah. So it's usually either myself or my other coworker, Tracy, sometimes Chuck, if Chuck is in town, um, but it's usually one of us, but you can always request one of us specifically as well. If you want to, some people do that. Well, you know me and Heather will. Sure we're working on that night. Yeah. Like, yeah <laughs> we want Stephanie or we're not going. Because, I mean, honestly, uh, um, I have a bucket list a mile long. But I'm trying to aim for the closer the better. That way, if I ever do move out to Montana or something, I can hit all New England and, and the East Coast at least. Yeah. Um, and New, York, New York's not that far. And I, I'm dying to meet you because I respect the hell out of you. We've been friends for a while. You know your shit. And I'd love, 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 love to get a tour. And and to find out some you know meet your boyfriend <laughs> and and yeah. meet the zero killer, you know but the same name as me and check out some good shit because you guys have a lot to offer so um with about a minute left uh, Stephanie Smith this hour went by fast I'll have you back on the show at some point and definitely on my yeah. podcast um anything you want to give a shout out to Are we got about a minute left too I just want to say hello to everybody in the paranormal world. I hope everybody enjoyed the podcast and, you know, definitely tune in more because you always have great stuff and great people on your, on your stuff, on your podcast and everything. So hopefully everybody enjoys the show. Look at that. It's time for her and she's fucking building me up. This is the type of people that I surround myself with. That's why I have 200 friends. I have 203 friends because when people start getting big headed and think their shit don't stink, I block them and I get rid of them. And I know that probably isn't the best thing, but I seriously, Stephanie is one of the good people in life. Uh, What she does follow fifth. uh, You can't really like them anymore. You can only follow them. I sent out a bunch of invites, uh, fifth element, paranormal five TH element, paranormal, and and the the Shanley uh, the Shanley House uh, Hotel in New York. Check them out. Stephanie Smith is one of the good people. Thank you, Witch in Life. She says, "Great show, uh, everyone. Everyone, great show." King Nicole Carlos Nunez uh, went by way too quick. We're gonna get the hard copy up tomorrow on Spotify, on Anchor FM, and on YouTube. Stephanie Smith, thank you for being my guest. Yeah, uh, you rocked. Thank, thank you, you girl. very much. I hope you have a great night. Be safe and. Um, We'll talk to you very soon, okay? All right. Sounds great. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody, for listening to the Historically Haunted Show on Paranormal King Radio Network. Uh, Have a great night, historians. Get out there. Learn something new. Talk to you soon. See you next Friday. Bye-bye. Hello. This is Adam Began, and I'm the host of Historically Haunted Show where I talk about some very rare historical and haunted locations that I visited. I also interview some of the very best in the paranormal and cryptozoology field. So tune in every Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Paranormal King Radio Network. And prepare to be educated about the unknowns.